Hello Somerville, Erica Jones here with Somerville Media Center and we are back for another uh, SNN Somerville Journal News Roundup with Julia Taliesin from the Somerville Journal. Thank you for coming back to our studios. Of course, always happy to be here Erica. We're so happy to have you. Um, lots to update on. As always. <laughs> There's been a lot of action and activity going on in the city which is keeping our elected officials and our activists and our residents and everyone just very engaged which is Indeed, on their toes a beautiful <laughs> yeah. thing um let's dive into i think one of the 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 uh, newer developments that's come out um san francisco just passed as one of the major cities um, banning facial recognition mm -hmm. city of somerville is looking to pursue the same type of yes. uh, legislation what is going on with that Sure. Um, so yeah, so I think just yesterday, San Francisco became the first major city yeah. to ban the use of this technology by the city. Right. So obviously this doesn't ban Apple from selling iPhones with facial recognition you know, in San Francisco. What right. this bans is the police force or the city you know, in their security cameras or on body cameras um, using this to, to identify persons to do any checks while you know they're on duty or you know while someone is surveilling um, and there are a lot of really good reasons for that um, so Ben Ewan Campin was kind of the person who introduced this but since then the entire council has signed on to support so it wow. has unilateral support and the mayor has also spoken out and supported this issue and was actually interviewed by the Boston Globe about this um, so it's it seems you know with you know the administration's you know, spoken support and the council's support that this is going to be moving forward. Um, right now, this is obviously in committee because they need to like look at writing one specifically for Somerville. So right. that is a process as it should be. Um, but definitely, they seem optimistic, you know, about implementing this. But is there anyone who's in favor? Like, is there anyone who would be um, benefiting from a like, facial sure. recognition? Um, so as of now, I mean, we have not had a public hearing yeah. on the issue. So. Right now, you know, I haven't heard from anyone specifically being against in favor. This is very new. This okay. was just last week. Um, so, you know, in the coming weeks, like as this is looked at in committee, like I'm definitely going to be all that's going to be more. analyzed. Yeah. Awesome. Um, but right now, really, um, so a, a report came out from the ACLU about the just significant race bias, like in facial recognition, that like okay. the way this software is being developed. Um, it is far more likely to accurately re um, identify a white male versus a black woman. Mm. Um, so what that can mean, you know, is if you know a police officer, a well-meaning even police officer, is you know doing their thing on the street and they're wearing a body camera, it's dark, um, or even it's not dark. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it misidentifies a person of color as it is more likely to do. Um, and misidentifies them as someone who has a warrant, you know, out against them or something like that, that the police may feel more justified in using force, um, which is not, I think, what we need. That's right. kind of what they're saying is like there, there is bias built into this technology as well as bias built into the way that we police. So this, this technology should not be being used until we know that it's accurate. Right. Um, Best intentions. Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of what they're looking at now. But like I said, early stages in Somerville. Um, and when yeah. are these hearings? Do you think? What are they happening? We do not know yet. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so that will to probably be come, determined. Yes. So as monitor they the website this. of Somerville yeah. Journal. I know you're on it. Yes. <laughs> you're on all the, things, all the things, which are many more that we're going to be yeah. discussing. Um, so thank you for that update. Sure. Um, there's been a regulation around straws, mm -hmm. that's straw and stirs. Yes. What's going on with that? Yes. So this was also last week. It was a busy week. Busy week. week. Yeah. Um, busy week. Yes. Yeah. So finally, um, they've been working on this for months. Um, this kind of, it's an ordinance um, regulating the use of plastic straws and stirs. So importantly, it is not a ban. Okay. It is not a unilateral ban. It's a clarifying ban. point. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a straw ban. Um, as some people have referred to it kind of casually. Um, stirrers, plastic stirrers, I think most people feel they're, they're not necessary, they're not medically necessary, so in the ordinance they are banned. So, you know, restaurants will be um, fined if they're not using like wooden or pasta or, okay. you know, other kinds of more sustainable or biodegradable stirring options. For stirrers, it's very simple, sure. really, just those little wooden stirrers. Yeah. Um, however, when it comes to straws, the reason why, you know, when this ordinance was first introduced, it was more of a ban because, you know, for good reason, people 
you know, the council, especially um, Councillor Ballantyne, the president of the council, they were really passionate about tackling this, you know, source of plastic waste. Sure. Right. Um, because it is, I mean, million, I think 500 million or something straws are like used and discarded annually. It's like, it, it is, it, it's nuts. It's fascinating. Really. No, it's yeah. a huge yeah. number. Um, and that's all generated also from oil as precisely. well. And it's just, yeah. Precisely. Um, so they really, they really wanted to seriously limit Somerville's contribution to that source of waste. Mm -hmm. However, straws are really important to certain communities, especially um, elderly and disabled communities in Somerville and everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and the truth is that alternatives to these straws, like metal straws, like bamboo, like paper, um, which can be great, you know, for someone maybe like you or I, mm -hmm. um, for people who, you know, have, you know, challenges with motor skills, like a metal straw, you know, if you are not able to necessarily control your jaw, right. you could bite it, you could break a tooth, you know, a paper straw disintegrates, you know what I mean? So if you are biting something or it just disintegrates over time. So they don't work sure. necessarily. Right. And it's especially, you know, it's important, especially in healthcare facilities, they couldn't right. make a unilateral ban. Um, so what they did is a regulation. Mm -hmm. So essentially there are fines involved. So restaurants, are not supposed to be giving them out without people asking. Got However, it. restaurants are not permitted to question someone if they ask for one. Discrimination. Precisely. Right. So because that person may not have a visible disability, right. you know what I mean? They're, so restaurants are supposed to have them on site, but they're kind of to be kept behind the bar or you know back in the kitchen. And if someone requests a straw, a straw will be brought. That's kind of how that's working. Um, and they voted it. They voted it in. So it is. Right. it has been ordained. So that is happening. That is happening. It's like soon. in effect? Yep. In effect now? I do believe so. In effect. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there's, I think, a window a of process. Yes, right. of course, of time while they adjust. But, right. For yeah. businesses to, mm -hmm. to get up to speed on all that. Okay. It's similar to like the plastic bag. Exactly. Bag. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you for that update. Um, a lot to learn here. Um, one of the last things we talked about when you were in the studio before was about the um, hearings around um, mm. modifying the youth voting age. Mm -hmm. So the verdict yeah. has come out and in favor of being as young as 16. Yep. So what is happening there? Yes. So what happens with this, so this is not an ordinance, this is not a law. Because this has to do with voting in the city, this would amend the city charter, okay, which is considered um, under state law, which means that we have to petition the state government for the right to do this. Got to make it. This change. So this okay. is not something that we like vote on and it happens. Ah, so understood. What, what the council has done is unanimously voted to send a home rule petition to the state government. Okay. For them to consider. Got so it. that has that has been voted on. It has been sent or it's in the process of being sent. It's right. already been drafted, et cetera. Okay. Um, so this is another step getting yes. towards so we that. we are not there. Not there, yeah. okay, that's and good clarifying point. The, I think just the important thing to mention here <laughs> is um, that many other cities in Massachusetts have tried to do this and have failed. Okay. Um, so kind of in the, in the coming months, I'm definitely gonna be looking at, you know, could Somerville, could Somerville be the first right. To actually succeed. And this is just voting in municipal elections. This is just voting okay. in municipal elections. And that's a good distinction because our representative, Ayanna Presley, actually introduced this at the federal level to lower the voting age to 16 and 17 year olds at the federal level. But that is a different thing. Different thing. This is municipal elections only. So this is our students voting for the school committee. This is our students voting for the city council, for commissioners. Like this is our our city right you know, our environment and that's yeah. good because I've been hearing kind of just mm -hmm. confusion around yeah. us so that's a good thing to clarify yep. um, quick kind of updates moving on which is um, we had that uh, armed robbery that happened in Davis Square recently yes. FBI is involved yes. now so just quick update they're still searching the reward has been doubled to $20,000 there are descriptions out on wanted posters. There are videos um, that you can find on the FBI website as well as on our website. We have several stories up about this if you okay. want to know the description they have of him and the clothes he was last seen wearing, et cetera. Um, but definitely a good thing to keep an eye out for as Absolutely. it's still an active search.
Yeah. Okay. Um, zoning, everyone's favorite talking point. Yeah. I know that you reported <laughs> exhaustively and that you continue to report on this. Yes. There's more information on your website, but what do you yes. want to give as a... Well, I just, I want to just let people know that, you know, I am learning this along with you. It's very um, complicated. It is very complicated. <laughs> and I, you know, it is a challenge for me as much as for you, but I'm really trying to do my best so that we can kind of engage with this as it's happening together um, because it's really a massive undertaking that the city council is going through. Um, so I would direct you to our website. We have articles about um, parking, articles about um, you know the different districts they're defining and how many units will be allowed in you know different structures within those districts. It's very dry. Um, and I have something coming out. They just had a meeting last night about affordable housing. So I'll have something coming out this week okay. about that aspect of the zoning code. So check back in. Basically. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your due diligence and all that. Um, Vox Pop yes. launch. Yes. I just really wanted to talk about this because I'm selfishly I mean, happy you want to report on yes. this. <laughs> it was such an amazing event. Um, I am so, you know, you know, as you know, the lone journalist <laughs> for the Somerville <laughs> Journal, um, I'm so hopeful to see, you know, more um, kind of oases of media popping up around the city and that you guys have had the opportunity to partner with Federal Realty on this right. incredible thing. And just especially because Assembly, um, you know, most people, you know, who pass through Somerville will know it's just a very different energy. It's very new. Sure. It's, you know, very shiny right. and like very high end, a lot of Sometimes it. Sometimes it's, it's people's first kind yeah. of touch into exactly. Somerville and, and it's a nice, and then yeah. we're here like, yeah, Hi, we're, we're, we're part of the rooted summer yes, too, and exactly. being, we're being bridge builders, exactly. which is nice. And yeah. I really, I want to emphasize that, like, when I walked into that space, like, the wall with the library books on it, like, SPL was, like, there. Yep. And, you know, all your history and the pictures of, like, old cable programs displayed on the wall. And it's just very welcoming, very colorful, you know what I mean, very cozy. And I was just like, yes, like, people cool. are going to want to know what's going on in there, which we I love. Appreciate yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, we're there all summer, so definitely check out our website, and I'm sure that we'll see we'll see you there yeah, throughout absolutely. the summer as well. Um, hopefully, making media at Vox Pop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, lastly, we'll close with um, Ward Three School Committee race. Yes. So I just wanted to bring this up um, because right now it is the only contested race on the school committee. That may change in the next month or so, um, but the current um, school committee member is stepping down, Lyrica Palmer, and three new badass women are stepping up. Um, so I've interviewed all of them. There are um, kind of short profiles up online about them. We will, of course, continue to report on this as it sure. progresses. Um, but because there are three, it triggered a primary um, vote, which will okay. happen in Ward 3 on September 10th. I know it's in early September, for sure. Um, so it's just a good thing to keep in mind that, like, you know, nomination papers are now, you know, getting sent in. You know, we have contested races for the councilor at large bid, so keep an eye on that. Um, right now, there's no primary election triggered for that, but we already have three new candidates, so if one more signs up, there will be. So just a good thing to keep an eye on, and we'll be on top of it. Wonderful. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Thank you um, so much. <laughs> High five. Because um, Julia Taliesin here is just a dynamite, and we appreciate having you a part of the the media ecosystem here in Somerville. So thank you for all the work that you're doing. Um, and as, as usual, their website is on the screen here, and we hope that you visit their website, check out all more of these topics um, further covered in depth. Um, and uh, you can reach Julia at your email is? My email is J-T-A-L-I-E-S-I-N, J-T-A-L-I-E-S-I-N, at wickedlocal.com. Wonderful. And we'll see you back here next month. next month. And on that note, we hope to see you all out and about in Somerville and being awesome local residents and just being your best selves. So on that note, we're out. We'll see you soon.